Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Holy cow, it's already Tuesday. You know what that means, Heidi? What does that mean? It means we're going to call and talk to your daddy today. Very cool. Oh, I forgot to say, how are you doing this this fine Tuesday? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm really glad to have you here. Uh, coming up later in the program, we've got a guest, your crazy father, for Tuesdays with Charlie. Uh, then, later, uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff that we're going to talk about, and hopefully make people laugh, make them smile, maybe, maybe, maybe make them think a while. I kind of stuttered through that. <laughs> uh, but I want to tell you about this right now. Northampton College in England. They created a course to teach people how to make a living on eBay. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a course, a college course now, to learn how to, quote, make a living using eBay. Do you think that's a college course? No, is that I don't worthy think of a college course? You need to go to college for yeah, that. Yeah, if you're going to go, if you want to make a living on eBay, you don't need to go to school for that. Just go on eBay and start making your living. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure how. Maybe they need a college course on that. I don't think so. All right. Coming up, we're going to talk about what special things are happening today. That's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get razors for $1 a month plus a few bucks shipping so you can enjoy fresh razors every month for as little as $3. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? thought you'd never ask. It's Tuesday, February the 16th, and today is Kyoto Protocol Day. That's I don't the, know what that is, but uh, okay. But That's today's lovely. the day. And uh, here's the other one, National Almond Day. I like almonds. I love almonds. You ever notice that like when you bite an almond, it splits in half, like almost perfectly mm-hmm. smooth? I what love about, them. You, but when you bite onto other things like uh, nuts and legumes, it doesn't always happen that way. So I wonder what's so special about almonds and why they sliver like that. Hmm. I don't know. They need a special day just for themselves, and I guess today's the day. Uh, have you ever had almond milk? I've had yes, that. you used to buy it. I got it. it. I, I, th- I thought it was pretty darn I good. I don't care for it. Almond milk. And I had, instead of peanut butter, I had some almond butter. Wow. That was really good, too. So today's a good day to celebrate. It is Almond Day. So thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Aspiring shoplifters would do well to learn a lesson from Spring Hill, Florida's Rodney A. Covington. Apparently not grasping the concept of the cash part of the cash and carry grocery store, Rodney walked out of the store with some items that he neglected to pay for. However, Rodney found the hard way uh, when shoplifting a one pound block of cheese and a 12 inch (laughs) pepperoni stick that it's best to wear something besides shorts. (laughs) Rodney was confronted by the store's manager and according to a police report, Rodney lifted his shirt exposing a pepperoni stick. (laughs) Covington told the cops he was carrying the meat and cheese in his pants because he, quote, hurt his hands and couldn't carry the shopping basket. Mm -hmm. He said, I intended to pay for the items, but then he couldn't explain why he didn't, and he was outside. Well, I intended to pay for the items. But you see, Your Honor, I I forgot to. I was busy walking and uh, carrying cheese. It was, again, a 12-inch pepperoni stick, and a one-pound block of cheese that he had stuffed in his pants. So there you go. That wasn't a very smart thing to do. No, well, of course not. He was stealing. Yeah, that alone is... You don't do that. No. It's a bad idea. But uh, you definitely don't do it that way. Uh, again, 12-inch pepperoni stick and a pound of cheese. This guy it's, it kind of sounds like something I would like. <laughs> <laughs> he and I should hang out sometime. I'll buy the cheese and the pepperoni. You just meet up with me and we'll have that. All right. Anyway, that happened again in uh, in Florida, Spring Hill, Florida. Coming up here in a bit, we're going to talk about the universal remote control that a guy said he was going to use to blow the place up. That didn't work either, but that's on the way. And uh, this one here, this guy that stole the stuff from the cash and carry, you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. 
We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. One of my favorite movies is a movie called Click. In this movie, he gets a universal remote control that controls the universe. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And it's an Adam Sandler movie. Uh, anyway, it's a funny movie. But this guy in Brisbane, Australia, uh, he had a universal remote control as well. But it doesn't control the universe, and it doesn't do what he said it would do. The people there in Brisbane, they got the scare of their lives when 57-year-old Jeffrey Fryant threatened to blow up half the city. <laughs> he was very drunk at the time. He had the whole city in a panic. The police declared a state of emergency. He shouted at the top of his voice, with one push of this button, I'll blow up half of Brisbane. (laughs) He claimed his remote control was uh, attached to control some explosives planted at a nearby store of chemicals. A lawyer representing Mr. Fryatt told the Brisbane District Court that his client had been drinking too much, and after he lost a a huge amount from his life savings in a fraud scam, he was destitute, and that's why he was drinking. No excuse as to why he was going to, quote-unquote, blow up half the city with the non-existent explosives. But at least he got to play with his remote control, so that (laughs) made him happy. All right, coming up, we've got your moment of duh. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll-free at 1-844-204-1055. Today's moment of duh is dedicated to the fans of Macedonian football, also known in North America as soccer. The fans here did something they probably shouldn't have, probably shouldn't, should have done a long time ago. They spent three days at a stop violence government sponsored event. But the problem was on the last day of the farewell dinner, they were calling it a total success, but that's when people started fighting with each other. A gun was fired. 30 people were arrested. Fortunately, there were no serious injuries, uh, serious injuries. By the way, the government refuses to say whether or not they'll do the program again. This is the second time this has happened. We had a story very similar to this, like two, three months ago. There was a group having a uh, Stop the Violence government-sponsored event. Theirs was a, like something soccer for peace, maybe, whatever it was, football for peace. Anyway, the, these countries are having some issues where their soccer fans, they call it football, but their fans are getting out of control. Now at least two of them have had a, a rally trying to stop that where it broke out into a fight. Wow. That's kind of ironic. Coming up here in a bit, we have your scoop of the day. The scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at bluebunny.com. Now, your scoop of the day. A recent study by cybersecurity researchers has found that 24% of Facebook ads selling luxury goods like Ray-Ban sunglasses or Louis Vuitton handbags, they're hawking counterfeit products. Really? Only 24%? I thought it would be much higher than that. (laughs) Buy some of these fabulous Ray-Ban sunglasses for just pennies on the dollar. You're like, yeah, I'm sure those aren't real. Hey, another stereotype has been shattered as we learn that men love to shop. What? As long as they can do it from home. According to a survey by iProspect. I still don't think so. It says you don't men shop from home. No, I don't. I don't like to shop online. I'm not going to do that. Men are spending more money shopping online than women, though. Guys are spending 20 to 30% more per transaction. And 84% of the purchases are for who, Heidi? Themselves. Themselves. It is, exactly. The number one website for dudes, by the way. <laughs> A uh, site that, I've never heard of these guys. Have you heard of the Amazon something like that? <laughs> yeah, that's that's where they're going. Hey, another reason not to drive while tired, according to a survey by AAA Washington D.C., nine of ten police officers there have thought a driver was drunk when they realized that they weren't drunk. They were just too tired to be driving. <laughs> So they were not drunk; they were just tired. So that's not good if it no. gives you the same. If yeah. it gives officers the same impression. Exactly, you're swerving and doing safe. drunk stuff when you're really just tired. Hey, it seems that Lorna Jean Dudash of Aloha, Oregon—that's just fun to say—became smitten with the deputy who came to her door to respond to a noise complaint by her neighbor. So she was making too much noise, and they, this officer came and told her, "Hey, you need to keep it down." Well, Lorna thought, "Wow, that that guy is pretty hot," so <laughs> she dialed nine one one. She said, hey, I don't know who the guy was, but he's the cutest cop I've seen in a long time. I'd just like to know his name. I know I don't have an emergency, but can you have him come back out here? And guess what? He did come back out. I bet. But he came out 
to give her a fine for abusing 911 for several thousand dollars and <gasps> could be a year in jail. Oh, she was arrested boy. and she could face a fine of several thousand bucks and a year in jail. So hopefully it was worth it there, Lorna. Uh, And again, that was in uh, Aloha, Oregon. See, I just wanted to say it again. Wow. A Canadian thief was getting ready to steal a car. Seems like a pretty stiff penalty, doesn't it? That does. Well, up to. So I don't know that it's going to necessarily be that. Going to jail. Yeah. That seems a bit harsh. Well, you know, don't mess with the system. Canadian thief was getting ready to steal a car and it wouldn't start. So he was uh, deciding, I'm going to ask for some help. And there was a policeman there. Uh oh. (laughs) Plain clothes policeman. So at least he didn't know he's a policeman. The teenager had the hood of a 97 Chevy Blazer up. The officer passed, not realizing it was a cop. He asked if he would help him start his car. The policeman offered him a hand before realizing it was a stolen car. After he figured it out, though, he arrested the 16-year-old boy, charged him with possession of stolen goods. I wonder how that went down. How did he find out that it was a stolen car? (laughs) I I don't know. And our final story here. People spent an insane amount of money on apps last year. Now, have you ever paid for an app, Heidi? Never. I've never, I ever, ever paid for an app. I've got some free apps, but I don't even use those. According to a Time Magazine report, Apple device users spent more than $20 billion in the App Store last wow. year. Apple users broke an App Store record by spending more than $1.1 billion on apps and in-app purchases just during the holidays. Wow. That figure includes money spent during the two-week period ending January 3rd. New Year's Day, by the way, was the biggest day the App Store ever had in the history. $144 million spent in the 24-hour period that we refer to as New Year's Day. That is insane. So what in the world were they doing? I've well, never spent over, a penny. You're in bed. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> gonna buy, gonna buy a pizza from an app? I've been I don't know. on this level on Candy Crush forever. <laughs> I need to buy some. <laughs> I don't know. I've never paid ever for an app. And I'm not saying that you're crazy if you do. That's up to you. You do your thing. Hey, you ready for Strange Law? Sure. In Muncie, Illinois, it's illegal to carry a tackle box into a cemetery. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of weird. That's why we call it the Strange Law. And this has been your scoop of the day. This portion of the program is brought to you by RoughToughKennels.com. Dog kennels and accessories sent to your front door wherever you live. Your dog deserves it. Learn more at RoughToughKennels.com. And it's time right now for my favorite program, something we do every Tuesday just because we can. We pick up the phone. We call my father-in-law for a little segment we like to call Tuesdays Tuesdays with with Charlie. Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? It's Tuesday, isn't it? It is Tuesday. You know, that's the only day of the week I know what it is because I get a clack call. Yeah, well, <laughs> we do our, our very best to make sure that you know that today's Tuesday. Well, good. So what kind of stuff are we going to learn about today, Charlie? Did you know that the wealthiest 85 people on the planet, just 85 people, have more money than the poorest 3.5 billion people combined? Wow. They must work really hard. So 85 compared to 3.5 billion. Yeah. Hmm. I'm in that 3.5 billion. So am I. I'm in that no, bigger you number. You are not. What? You are not in what they're talking about. The 3.5 billion that they're talking about are the people that are living in like Africa and in the bush where there where there's like nothing around. No, they're them. saying that there's 300 the whole world. Yeah. That yeah. 85 people have more money than all the rest of us. No, but that's okay. Not everybody else on the planet. That's how I read. Is that what you meant, Charlie? Is that what that means? Damn near. 3.5 billion people. Three, more than the bottom 3.5 billion people. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in that bottom three point. Now I have to do some research. But <laughs> I can tell you, I'm not one of the 85. <laughs> I know that for sure. I thought I was 86, but not, you know, but not 85. I do know that for sure. I agree with you there. We are not in the. 86. We are not in the in, in the top 85. <laughs> hey, then uh, here is a little sea story for you. Okay. You know what a humpback whale is? I do. You know that they often let dolphins hit you right on their head for the sheer fun of it. No kidding. That's that's cool. I would do that if I was a humpback whale. Hop on, dolphins. Yeah, jump on me. I'll travel you around the world here. That'd be kind of neat. Get that, off me. <laughs> I've heard that off. before. Get off me. <laughs> Go away. I just I just had a, a statistic here uh, about dolphins, and this is something we're going to be talking about later in the program, but I'll share it now since you mentioned dolphins. Did you know that dolphins sleep with one eye open? Did you know that? Yes, I did. I did not know that. I probably learned that on Tuesdays with Charlie. I think we did one time many years ago. Yeah. So dolphins sleep with one eye open. I did not know that. Hey, did you know there's such a thing as red bananas? Yeah. 
I've, I've seen them. I've never seen them in person, but I saw them on a TV program, and I thought it looked really weird. And they taste uh, sweet, creamy, and a little bit like raspberries. Huh. Oh, I might like those. I want to try some now. Plantains, I think they're called. No, that's a different one. No, that's they're not different? plantains. I don't know. No, that is, so then you can look that up in your Funkin' Wagnalls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> president of Zimbabwe. Okay. Was President Banana. His, his name, name was, was president, president Banana? Banana? And a law was passed forbidding citizens from making jokes about his name. So you couldn't make fun of his name? President Banana. <laughs> it was illegal to make fun of his name. Huh. Passed law, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I bet it would take a law because that's a fun name to make fun of. Hey, then, uh, did you know that even wild chimpanzees know how to look both ways before crossing the road? That's awesome. I did not know that, but that is really cool. Well, they, you know, they probably have more intelligence than I do, so they're a little sharper <laughs> than me. <laughs> Hey, then I got one last thing here for you. All right, what's that? Do you know what the first word spoken on the Internet was? Hello? Close. It was Mo. Mo? It was supposed to be log in, but the computer crashed after the first two letters. So it's L-O. Oh. Low. Huh. Well. Punched in, it was supposed to say log on, but it said low. <laughs> well, now we know. Are you ready for a little trivia, Charlie? Trivia? Yeah, I got a good question for you today. I actually got two of them. One I'm going to just give to you because I don't think you're going to get it. But the other one is a good question that was sent in. Well, give me a shot at it. All right. So well, I'll give you a shot at both of them. First one is uh, one that was sent in. A group of rattlesnakes. What do you call a group of rattlesnakes? Dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deny that. You, you get it. But they're also called a rumba. It is a rumba of rattlesnakes. Really? People really seem to like these groups of things. Yeah. Because you've had a lot of questions about that. Uh, now, here's the other question. This is one that I found, and I thought it was really interesting, and I had no clue. I would have never gotten this right. You remember Popeye and Olive Oil? They were dating, but before Olive Oil dated Popeye, what was her previous boyfriend's name? Bluto. No, that's the most common guess, though. Most people think Bluto, but they never dated. He liked her, but she didn't like him. Before she dated Popeye, now, folks, shout it out if you know the answer so those around you can be extremely impressed. It wasn't Wimpy, whoever said that. The answer is Ham Gravy. The guy's name was Ham Gravy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really cool. Was he ever on the show? I don't know. I don't know. Olive ever. Oil dated Ham Gravy. That. <laughs> 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 then she traded up for Popeye because he was such a handsome guy, you know. <laughs> Ham well, Gravy. Ham Gravy. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> All right. Well, good to talk to you, Charlie. You have a great day. I will. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Fluff. Bye, John. Bye-bye. My father-in-law right there. We talk to him every Tuesday. If you've got a question that you'd like to ask him, I'm going to give you the email address. We haven't given that out in a while. Uh, the email address to send a question to Charlie, send it to charlie at johnandheidyshow.com, and then we'll ask your question next week. That's going to do it for this week, and it's a little program we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Charlie. Charlie. This portion of the program is brought to you by CarsForSale.com. If you're in the market to buy a car, truck, or van, find thousands of vehicles to choose from at CarsForSale.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? I already told you this earlier today when we were talking to your papa, but dolphins sleep with one eye open. It's kind of cool. I wonder why that is. I don't know. Keeping an eye out for all those uh, bigger fish that want to eat them, apparently. Hey, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? This is fun fact number 800, I believe. Or maybe it's seven ninety nine. Anyway, Henry Ford never had a driver's license. That's cool. Yeah, it is kind of cool. But when you think about it, before he made cars popular, nobody had a driver's license. So he never got one. Hey, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Scientists predict that 42% of Americans will be obese by 2030. <laughs> I, I beat you to it. Uh, I don't have to wait till 2030. I'm already obese. So the rest, uh, 42% will be by the uh, 2030, they say. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The first episode of Sesame Street was sponsored by the letter W, the letter S, and the letter E. Very cool. Now you know. There's some fun facts. We've got other fun stuff coming your way. This portion of the program is brought to you by StoneGroupArchitects.com. It's more than a building. It's design and function working together. Check out the project portfolio at StoneGroupArchitects.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on this Tuesday. I got the top scientific theories for you here, Heidi. Okay. An American magazine held a competition inviting its readers to submit new scientific theories on any subject. Below were their winners. <laughs> okay. Fifth place, probability theory. It says, 
in an infinite number of red, uh, if an infinite number of rednecks riding in an infinite number of pickup trucks fire an infinite number of shotgun rounds at an infinite number of highway signs, they will eventually write the complete works of Shakespeare in Braille. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, that's, what, that's why it's funny. Fourth place, subject, biomechanics. Why yawning is contagious. You yawn to equalize the pressure on your eardrums. This pressure changes outside your head. It unbalances the other people's ear pressure, so they need to yawn to even it out. Biomechanics. Okay. These, Fourth, are, these are pretty stupid. These are funny. Third place. <laughs> That's why you should laugh. <laughs> Symbolic logic. The Chinese are technologically underdeveloped because each of their alphabet characters represents a whole word or phrase rather than a single letter. Thus, they cannot use acronyms to communi- communicate technical ideas at a faster rate. So there you go. That's a third place. Second place. Again, uh, these are hilarious. So that's why everybody else is laughing. And Heidi's not. <laughs> Top scientific theories. Uh, second place. Uh, Newtonian mechanics. It says deforestation may cause earthquakes, tidal waves, or even total destruction of our planet, just as a figure skater's rate of spin increases when the arms are brought in close to the body. The cutting down of tall trees may cause the earth to spin dangerously fast on its axis with disastrous results. I don't see that happening. (laughs) And the winner, by the way, Mm. the perpetual motion is the subject here, says when a cat is dropped, it always lands on its feet. When toast is dropped, it always lands butter side down. Therefore, if a slice of toast would be strapped to a cat's back, butter side up, and the animal is dropped, the two opposing forces was caught, would cause this to hover, spinning inches above the ground. If toast-laden felines were used, they could form the basis of high-speed monorail systems. See? See? Mm-hmm. There was a contest, and that was the winner right there. Yeah, that was American amazing. Magazine held a competition. Those were the top five winners. I thought that was kind of funny. Heidi clearly did not. Do you know what this airtime is worth that you oh, just I know. wasted? Hey, hey, it was not wasted. That was a, that was a very important <laughs> break. Coming up, we're going to talk about reading on a plane and on a train and other places, too. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Reading is a good way to pass the time if you're riding on an airplane or if you're riding on a train, but not while you're driving. Somebody should have told that to 37-year-old Bettina Smallman. Seen driving erratically down a street in Brockville, Ontario. Police believe she might be intoxicated and tempted to pull her over. She finally did. Police found that she wasn't drunk. She was engrossed in a book she was reading wow, while that driving. Is so, so crazy. Not only was she distracted from driving, but it took her a while before she even noticed the officer signa- oh signaling her pull over. So that's how into the book she was. Oh, Here's the thing if you're that man. into a book, stay, stay home. home. Wherever you're going, just don't go. Or maybe. Put the book down for a bit. Hmm. That is just nuts. Yeah, I is. remember driving down the road one day, and a guy passed me on the interstate reading a newspaper. I mean, he had a newspaper, and he was holding it on each side of the That's steering wheel. That's crazy. And he had a newspaper holding it, and, and he was driving. called the cops. I was like, what in the world? That guy's driving, reading a newspaper. So... That's back when people read newspapers. (laughs) Coming up, we're going to talk about a nasty ice storm and how beneficial they could be. This portion of the program is brought to you by GunUp.com. If you're a gun lover, you'll be in heaven at GunUp.com. Built by experienced military veterans, shooting sports competitors, and publishing professionals, they have awesome stories and articles that are read by millions of gun enthusiasts. Check it out at GunUp.com. Sometimes nasty ice storms can actually be beneficial. I'm not a fan of ice storms, but uh, this this story is a true story, and it's from Scarborough, Maine. They've gotten dumped on in the Northeast this year, haven't they? Well, a woman there pulled into her driveway, and she found another car was parked in her driveway. Sean Tarr told her he was trying to turn around in the driveway, and he got stuck. It was so icy, he just couldn't get traction. Could, Could you please help me out? Sure, she said. But then she noticed her laptop computer in his car. She she quietly sent her daughter to go in to call the police, then pretended to help him. And that's when she saw her chance. She grabbed her laptop and ran into the house herself. Police arrived. He was still stuck trying to escape. He put some boards under the tires to get traction, but couldn't get out of there. So he stole stuff from her house. She came (laughs) home and he's like, hey, I'm sorry for blocking your driveway, but I turned around in your driveway and I got stuck on this ice. And it's a good thing he got stuck because he couldn't leave and the police came. How crazy is that? So how awesome uh, was that for her to be thinking on her feet like that? 
Good stuff. Coming up here in a moment, we're going to talk about the Treasury Department and some interesting stuff. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. A Treasury Department finds some 40% of Americans believe that payments to bank accounts using paper checks are more secure than direct deposit, Heidi. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. Do you I think just... it's better to do direct deposit or write a, uh, sign a check and hand it to I a banker? I don't know that it matters either way. I don't well, think. a top department official says that assumption is wrong, dead wrong. They say the department is mounting what they call their Go Direct campaign aimed at getting greater use of direct deposit by recipients of Social Security and Supplemental Security income payments, among others. The commissioner of the Department of Fiscal Management Service says... 80% of benefits payments are now done by direct deposit. Officials are hoping to get the remaining 20% to come around. You know why? Hmm. Because it would cut the costs of mailing the checks. Mm. It would cut the cost of printing the checks. It would cut the cost of all the envelopes. It would also reduce the risk of theft from mailboxes, and it would cut down the amount of fraud in that system as well. So they're saying, hey, It's not bad. It's good to do the direct deposit. Now, here's the thing. I don't get anything direct deposited. Mm -mm. Um, It's not because I don't want to. It's just I don't get paid regularly. So (laughs) Heidi pays me when she feels like it. (laughs) Every once in a while, I get a check. I'm like, what's this for? (laughs) I'm getting paid today? (laughs) Thank you, baby. I was like, oh, wait a minute. It's because our anniversary (laughs) is coming up. That's what it is. Oh, and Valentine's Day. That's what it is. I got paid last week. It was nice. It was really nice. (laughs) Coming up here in a bit, we're going to talk about your political values and how that affects your parenting. And I can't wait to hear Heidi's uh, response to all this. It's good stuff, but it's it's part of our good news. So I think that's really kind of a cool thing. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV. Call 1-800-259-7646. They have hundreds of channels to choose from, with many packages to fit your viewing desires. Learn more at 1-800-259-7646. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news, and I think today is uh, good news as well. This is really kind of an interesting study. They do studies all the time, right? Yeah. Sometimes you agree with them and sometimes you mock them. Yeah. I think you're going to like this one. Do your political values affect your parenting values? What do you think? Yes or no? Yes. I think so, too. A Pew Research Center study seems to indicate that they do. Respondents to the study were given a list of 12 traits important to teach children and were asked to pick the ones that were the most important. Not just any ones, but the top three. They said, tell me the top three most important things that you need to pass on to your children. The study found that those who uh, listed conservatism as their main political values consistently listed traits like being responsible Mm -hmm. and hard work Mm -hmm. and religious faith. Those were the top three Mm -hmm. as the most important things. While those consistently listing liberal as their main emphasis consistently listed Empathy for others and helping others in their top three. So I think that's really kind of an interesting thing. You can check the entire chart on their website. I'm going to actually throw a link on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. If you're teaching your children Christianity and religion, they're going to automatically learn empathy and caring for others. Yeah. So So that's in there too, you're saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the conservatives are definitely teaching that to their children. I wonder which way Heidi leans. not turning them into a bunch of whiny little pansies. (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) I wonder which way she leans. Anybody want to guess? I I tend to. You know how difficult it is during a political year for us to do this program? Because I I say we don't want to be a political program. I just don't want to go there because, you know, I know some of you are leaning to the left. I love you. Those of you lean to the right, I love you. Uh, Some of you don't care. I love you, too. But when I work with Heidi, my <laughs> wonderful wife of 16 plus years now, she makes it difficult sometimes to make that happen. So time to say goodbye, Heidi. <laughs> goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. And your bonus break is brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. You can learn more on their website. I'll give that to you in a second. But first, let me tell you this. You can buy darn good razors. For a dollar a month, 
and then you get two dollars for shipping. So it's three bucks a month. They'll bring them right to you, and you can shave for less. All you do is check out their website, dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Please remember the slash radio. Here's why. Because then we get credit for it, so they know that this is working. Dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Tell your friends, too. Hey, blame it on the jeans, Heidi. All right. Sean Eldon Duvall's response to charges he pointed a loaded pistol at a southwest Pennsylvania regional police detective. According to court documents, the officer asked Duvall if he needed help. Duvall says he was stopped, uh, stopping at his friend's house to play chess. Duvall told the officer that he had a concealed carry permit for his gun, which was lying on the seat of his car. Duvall says he couldn't carry the gun as required because his jeans were too tight. The detective charged char, uh, the de- detective charges the gun was hidden under papers and aimed at him. Duvall says he didn't purposely point the gun at the officer. Duvall tells... Uh, Duvall will tell his story to a judge in a couple of weeks when they get to go to court for it. But he's saying, you know, I have a permit to carry this thing in my pants. And as long as he disclosed it to the officer, And he did disclose problem? it. So I'm not sure. He's saying blaming it on the tight jeans. That's why it was sitting there instead of tucked in my pants. So uh, I hope he was being responsible, and I guess all that's going to come out. And we'll, we'll find out. It may look easy in the movies, but a bank heist in Australia didn't go so darn well. The crooks there intended to, you know, rob a bank. Well, that's not quite what happened. Three men wearing dark hooded tops entered a bank. They produced a gun, and they demanded money. Instead of handing over the loot, the staff calmly left their seats, walked into a secure room made from floor-to-ceiling bulletproof plexiglass, and shut the door behind them. Of course, half a dozen customers left behind probably weren't thrilled to be stuck with the robbers, but it all ended peacefully as the crooks gave up and left empty-handed. So, wait a minute. They left all the customers out with the bad guys? (laughs) Are you kidding me? (laughs) <laughs> they all walked in a room that's uh, you know bulletproof glass. They're like, sorry, we're not giving you any money. Well, we're <laughs> going to just start shooting your customers in. That's fine. We got a lot of customers. <laughs> I don't understand that. Does that seem ridiculous to you? Uh huh. I just don't get that. That seems absolutely ridiculous. All right. Hey, we're going to get one last thing in here. Uh, whether personal errands or catching up on sleep or just relaxing, Americans are using sick time more than for more than just the common cold. It says here one-third of U.S. workers say they've played hooky from work over the last 12 months. This is from a career builder survey. 35% of workers admit that they've called in sick when they weren't really sick at least once. You ever do that, Heidi? Oh, yeah. I've called in sick before hey. when I wasn't sick. Here at the radio station? No. You better not. I'll catch you. <laughs> one in 10 said they do this three or more times a year. Uh, it says here employees are becoming more crafty with their excuses, too. Employers told career builders some of the most unusual excuses they've heard for the reason somebody's coming or not coming in uh here are a few number one on the list i was sprayed by a skunk i uh, can't make it in today i really stink i got sprayed by a skunk i can like, see that yeah stay home another one i tripped over my dog and i got knocked out <laughs> i could <laughs> so see that i was unconscious if you hit your head on a table or something bonked my noggin another one that's interesting i was arrested as a result of mistaken identity <laughs> Another one. I forgot to come back to work after lunch. What? I just forgot to come back to work after yeah, lunch, so they just not, stayed that home? That one's not a good excuse. Uh, I can't make it in today. Why not? I can't find my shoes. Okay, you wear a different pair of shoes. Can't make it in today. Why not? I hurt myself bowling. I can see that. Uh, you, when I say I can't make it in, you ask me why not. Can't make it in today, Heidi. Why not? I was spit on by a venomous snake. <laughs> that would that would be a good reason. <clears throat> Spit on or bit? Are those two different things? Uh, Heidi, I can't make it to work today. Why not? Total my wife's Jeep in a collision with a cow. <laughs> I could see that. Can't make it in today, baby. Why not? My curlers burn my hair and I have to go to the hairdresser. <laughs> can't make it in today. Why not? I'm eloping. Okay. Wow. Can't make it in today. Why not? My cat unplugged my alarm clock again. <laughs> and my favorite on the list here. Can't make it in today. Why not? Well, I have to be there for my husband's grand jury trial. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a good reason. Uh, here are some others, by the way, that were not on the list. But if you'd like to, you know, if you're, if you're working on ways to play hooky, you can, you can also say, my fish is sick. I need to take him to the vet. That's always a good one. I can't make it in. I have a chance of uh, filling in for somebody on jury duty. You know, just in case they call, I need to stick around. Can't make it in today because if I come into work, I got these eye troubles here. I just can't see myself working today. How about this one? I can't come into work today because I'll be stalking my previous boss who fired me for not showing up for work one time. 
Whoa, so I'm going to be busy with that. So yeah, that's probably probably not, not going to be able to make it in. Um, I'd love to come in. I can't because I got my arm stuck in one of those blood pressure machines. I'm I'm stuck at Walmart for the week. <laughs> Uh, For the week. Not going to be able to come in today because my computer got a virus, and my computer means a lot more to me than my job does. <laughs> Whoa. And the last one, this one I think is really funny. I'm not going to be able to make it into work today, Heidi. Why not? Well, I woke up this morning, and I took two X-Lax instead of two Prozac. So oh, boy, yeah. I'm going to stick close it. to the bathroom. <laughs> huh. Funny. <laughs> All right. Some fun little calling in sick tips there from our friends at Career Builder. It's going to do it for the bonus break brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio.